everyone, please say welcome back to another anime pickups video. This is going to be a discotheque media haul. Uh, this is basically everything I've picked up over like the last month and a bit, I think. And this is going to be the first discotheque media haul of many, <laughs> um, as I mentioned in a prior video. Uh, basically for the most of the rest of this year and probably into next year as well, I want to pick up all the discotheque media stuff I'm missing. It's a bit difficult to do that right now. They've had their warehouse transition. If you've been following discotheque media at all, you know that they moved their warehouse distributor or whatever moved to a new warehouse and it's caused significant delays and it's been going on for like nearly six months. It's mostly out of discotheque's hands, so it's really frustrating. So it's really hard to get a lot of their older titles at the moment because they're just not getting in stock quickly enough or at all, so <laughs> it's kind of made this really frustrating to start wanting to get a bunch of discotheques old catalogue titles that I've missed out on for ages um, trying to get that stuff is really hard right now but I've still managed to get 10 things here a bunch of them are Blu-ray upgrades, the stuff I already owned um, but there's also a bunch of stuff uh, that's brand new to the collection as well so we'll start off with some of these Blu-ray upgrades quickly. So uh, I had Space Adventure Cobra, the movie, on DVD. I also have the TV series and the um, Sentai release of the 2010 OVAs as well. Um, but now I have Space Adventure Cobra, the movie, on Blu-ray. So yeah, this is one of the older Blu-rays that Discotope put out. For some reason, I just never got around to getting. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm glad to finally have it now wanted to make sure that's one thing I'm trying to focus on the most is older discotheque releases that I haven't got around to buying yet because a lot of that stuff is obviously um, more likely to go out of print sometime soon and that's the one thing that's really worrying me about this warehouse thing I'm just worrying there's gonna be like a stealth thing going out of print where it's just like it went out of print and you can't really get it anymore for some reason like there was like barely any left in the warehouse anyway and they're all gone and now we're not printing anymore and it's just kind of like, <laughs> like I'm really worried about that right now because um, yes for finding some of these titles second hand on the on eBay and Amazon and stuff is really hard as well like they just don't seem to be around very much anyway so this is a uh, a Blu-ray upgrade of sorts. I had the DVD release, but it wasn't a uh, discotheque release. So we got a uh, Devil Man from Manga Entertainment on DVD. <laughs> this is the dub only release, um, and the dub obviously for this is a train wreck. It's hilariously terrible, but um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I finally picked up the Blu-ray. This is an upscale, but honest to God, it's like compared to the DVD quality on here, it's a significant upgrade. And um, first time I ever saw this upscale, I didn't even realize it was an upscale. <laughs> like before this release came out, when the Japanese Blu-ray was around, and I saw uh, clips of it, and I was just like, "Really?" Like I just, well, I just saw it, and it just looked like a Blu-ray. Like it had, it's clearly sourced from a film print. Uh, it's basically, I assume, it's sourced from a remastered DVD that was very meticulously remastered and looks beautiful from the film print. This certainly was not of this, <laughs> of like that at all. So, yeah, this is still a huge upgrade, and the Blu-ray looks really nice in my opinion, despite being an upscale. It's just a little bit soft every now and then, but honestly, you can. It's really hard to tell. It's definitely one of the more. Um, better upscales out there because the original source material was obviously of high quality although the question therein is you clearly have a film print why didn't you just do it properly rather than just upscaling from this DVD I, I wonder if it was um, a case of the, the film print remaster they did for a DVD I assume it was for a DVD in Japan which is the source for this I wonder if it was um, when they did that remastering, the, the video master they eventually had f <laughs> left over was still of a higher quality than what DVD can provide, but maybe not 1080p. Like, I assume that's kind of what happened here, maybe? So, yeah, that's kind of why it looks really nice, but still not quite as perfect as it probably should have been. But honestly, like again, compared to this pile of garbage in terms of video quality, this is a huge upgrade. This also includes the Japanese for once, <laughs> um, as well as the original manga entertainment 
trash fire dub so uh yeah definitely wouldn't recommend watching the dub unless you just want a, a laugh which i guess it's worth it for that um i was pretty much okay with these ovas i i do like them um, but I'm definitely more of a fan, probably one in the minority in this case, but I really like the 2000 OVA, I think Devilman Apocalypse, I think it was called, or something like that. I forget exactly what it was called. Um, yeah, I thought that, Amon, Amon the Apocalypse, I think is what it was called. Uh, yeah, that, I thought that was really cool, so I'd really like to see that come out. Apparently it's kind of difficult, it's with Anaplex, although... Just because something's with Anaplex doesn't necessarily mean it can't come out. It's not like Anaplex of America are going to put it out. So, I don't know. There's a chance. I, f I wonder if it's in some sort of licensing hell, though, because it's never come out. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, I had on DVD <laughs> Horus, Prince of the Sun, or the Little Norse Prince. This is the early, no, not early, uh, mid 60s, I think 1967 around there, a uh, Toei animation film that was directed by Asao Takahata and also had character designs, I, th I believe, it just says with animation, but I think there were character designs as well, uh, by Hayao, Hayao Miyazaki, so this is basically a proto like Ghibli movie <laughs> of sorts, that's basically why it's more significant than a lot of other 60s films that came out at the same time from Toei, is because the people behind it. Uh, the DVD has uh, two commentaries, one by Mike Tool and one by Daniel Thomas Mancinez. I remember when I picked this up, I didn't remember how to pronounce his name, and I still don't. Well, the Blu-ray has all those special features intact. It has a better video quality, obviously. Um, but it also has a different commentary, so you've still got the two commentaries. Commentary with Mike Tool and a commentary with Daniel Thomas. Meh, meh, meh. But, uh... <laughs> Um, this time he did a completely different commentary, he wasn't 100% happy with the one he did for this, where he was basically reading out essays, so he did, sent in a completely new commentary for when they mastered this, uh, Discotech put it out, so, uh, yeah, so we have basically three commentaries for this film, although one's only slightly different from the other, kind of surprised it didn't include the old version of the commentaries, just like, hey, screw it, like, so on Blu-ray, here's three commentaries, two of them are pretty similar, but they are different. Screw it, it's just more stuff. <laughs> but they didn't do that, as far as I can tell. It just says two commentaries on the back. I haven't double completely checked, but I'm assuming that's the case. So, yeah, um, I'm probably going to keep this DVD. It's not really worth anything at this point. And, uh, yeah, so I'll probably keep the DVD and just have all three commentaries. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever get around to listen to them all. I've only listened to the Mike Tool one and only a snippet of the other one from the original DVD. Anyway. <laughs> so I had Go Shogun, the Time Etranger movie on Blu ray. And then I had the TV series on DVD. Well, I now have the TV series on Blu ray. So yeah, I've uh, finally picked uh, this one up. I wanted to get this one into the collection quicker since. I've uh, just sold this, so uh, well, this is literally the last time you'll see it. <laughs> um, it will be going uh, to someone else. I just sold it on eBay uh, literally this morning. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to show them the TV series from 1981, I believe. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching this one. It's not overly long, which is kind of nice. Many, many, many giant robot shows from the 80s are like 50 episodes, so this one's only 26. So yeah, looking forward to watching this one, especially since it has a movie sequel as well. I love the opening theme to this, um, and the Blu-ray quality on this is immense. It is only on two discs, which is the one thing I was slightly disappointed with when I opened this up. Um, it shouldn't be a huge problem at all really, but ideally for 26 episodes you'd want three discs. I mean, there's no... I know, I'm probably just being over overly cautious with that like because I mean how many episodes is that it's 13 episodes of disc yeah so I mean there's no English audio on it so there's only one audio track and it's I mean it will be a high quality <coughs> audio track and it is stereo I thought it'd be mono but it's actually stereo okay so um yeah I know I'm sure it's fine I'm sure it's absolutely fine it will certainly look better than the DVD did Although I, I assume this DVD is also sourced from the same film print 
and I would imagine. Um, anyway, whatever. So we've got Go Shogun TV series on Blu-ray. So yeah, this is this is crazy times we're living in. Like just think, like just think where we were in the anime industry, like like eight years ago or something. Like look what Discotech have brought us. Like they all based on their Lupin obsession and their Fist of the North Star release, and then it just progressed from there. And it's like <laughs> this is a 1980s, early 1980s giant robot series that we have got complete on Blu-ray, <laughs> like, in beautiful high definition, like, it, and it's not even that much money to buy it, like, this isn't like the old DVD releases back in the day where Gundam was on 10 volumes and Aura Battle of Dunbine was on 12 volumes and things like that, Armored Trooper Votons was on 16 volumes, like, no, it's just a complete series on Blu-ray. First time ever to, obviously never released on DVD before, with a Obviously, it was that weird dub back in the day, but um, yeah, it's just mad times, mad times. Sometimes I have to just, like, as a anime fan and collector, and especially a fan of like older stuff, and I've really been getting into older stuff recently. Like, yeah, it's just mad times we're living in. <laughs> it really is. Um, here's something I would love if it was a Blu-ray upgrade, but it's not. It's only on DVD, and it, <laughs> this is the minus, like the absolute minuscule upgrade like I kind of just bought this because I wanted to support it because I'm a huge fan of this franchise and any apple seed which is what this is <laughs> any apple seed that comes out this is the manga DVD this is a discotheque release so yeah any apple seed that comes out I want to support because I just want more of it I want the I want the uh, people <laughs> behind apple seed to know that if you ever want to make some more I'm on board for some more. Um, I could totally see a new Apple C coming out from like Netflix or something. That seems like a smart thing in terms of their anime stuff. But anyway, yeah, uh, Apple C the OVA. There's literally no difference from this, pretty much. Like, there's no extras or anything. There is a commentary track on the UK release for this, although I've heard it's super awkward because it has the voice actress for Dunan in it, and it has um. Jonathan, I forgot his last name now. That sucks. But the guy that, like Jonathan, Jonathan Clemens, like the, he's uh, on it as well, like, the anime historian dude. But apparently it's like super awkward because the the lady the, the, who plays uh, Dune and just doesn't sound like she wants to be there or, at all. So I've never bought that or listened to it because I, I I imagine I would cringe too hard, and I don't really need it at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, this has surround sound. Does this one have surround sound? Yeah, it does. This has stereo and surround sound mix. Yeah, so I don't really think... There's no character BIOS on this, probably, but that's not really anything significant. So there's not really any difference. The, the only major difference for, between these two releases is the fact that this comes with a slipcover, which is nice. With has got the UK artwork underneath. Um, but it also... I guess I'll show the disc. I always do that. But, um... Yeah, the oh wow, I forgot it has this this on the inside too. <laughs> this is the um, I think this is the artwork from the laser disc in Japan. I know I know that, I've, or the soundtrack CD. I think it's a soundtrack CD it has this artwork on it. This is really really cool. Um, so I finally get out the thing I've been trying to say for like the last two minutes. <laughs> the only real difference is that the uh, the presentation of the image is slightly larger, like there's a little bit more I image data on the top and bottom and the aspect ratio is slightly m is correct compared to what it is on the manga one, it's a little bit more squashed and I cannot get this back in there we go, so yeah, uh, Appleseed, happy to support uh, this, I really highly recommend uh, this um, particular edition of um, Appleseed uh, it's the only one that's animated in 2D, obviously, like cell animated, everything else has been CG, and it has the more classic style uh, character designs from the manga, and it's a pretty decent little story. It's only about 50 minutes to an hour, but it's um, pretty awesome, and uh, my cat is messing with all my lighting right now, so I'm going to go and sort that out. Okay, so we're halfway through, I have five things left, we've got uh, four Blu-rays and one DVD, just like the first half actually, four Blu-rays and one DVD, um, but this is all new stuff, this is all stuff that um, 
I've never owned in my collection. And some of this stuff has been out, yeah, actually, for at least three of these things have had DVD releases at some point. But, uh, yeah, I have never bought them before, so... But, uh, yeah, most of these are Blu-ray Blu rays now anyway, so I'm glad I didn't. Hey, anyway, whatever. Uh, first up, we have uh, Babel 2 or Babel 2, uh, the 1992 OVA series, it's like a four episode OVA, I, I generally don't really know much about this, I really need to watch it, it seems to be a really genre, like, mashup of, like, because I think it has, like, some sort of uh, robot stuff in it, yeah, robot guardians, but it's also got, like, superpowers, uh, physicists, does that say, yeah, physicists and stuff, so I think it's got like a lot of supernatural stuff. Originally, I put this in my supernatural horror section, and then I considered maybe putting it in my classic mecha section. But they only say robot guardians. I just need to watch it, and then I'll really, I'll really know. And it looks really cool, and obviously it'll be on Blu-ray. So yeah, this is definitely something I'd like to watch very soon. I'm happy to get it for the collection. Um, this is obviously the second instalment of sorts, or at least the second adaptation of. Uh, Babel, <laughs> or Babel 2, was the original one called Babel 2 as well? Basically what, there's a 70s series, 1973, called Babel 2, I think, so maybe, if it's only called Babel, this would be a sequel, I actually don't know, I can't remember, <laughs> I think it's called Babel 2 as well, but anyway, um, yeah, this is the OVA, there's a 70s series, um, it'd be kind of cool if Discotech got that as well, I guess, I believe, there's a Blu-ray for release for that in Japan, or at least it's in HD, I think. Um, oh, I can never get these... Discotech slip covers are always so hard to get back on. So uh, Discotech got this uh, license from Inoki Films, if you remember that company talked about in the past, like a... I don't know, like a company that just holds a bunch of licenses for like international distribution or something, I don't really know the full details, but yeah. Uh, they got this from Inoki Films, there's also the sequel to this, or just another version, I don't know, uh, Babel 2 Infinity, I think it's called that, which must mean the original series is also called Babel 2, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Babel 2 Infinity, the 13 episode series from like 2001, Bandai Entertainment originally put it out, it does have a dub, so I'd really like to see Disco Tech put it out as well, they've been putting out so many titles from Anoki Films, they just don't want to put out the two that I want, or at least the two 13 episode early 2000 shows that I want. There's also like the J9 trilogy that I really want that's on there as well. But they won't put out Barber 2 Infinity, which I don't think is an amazing series, but I just like to have it because it has a dub. All the ones they've been putting out are stuff that's never been put out before that doesn't have dubs. That one does. So if this, And you put this out, it just feels like put that one out. <laughs> and then um, the other one is obviously Super Submarine 99, which is the last like Ladyverse early 2000s title on there that they haven't put out. <laughs> They've re-released Gun Frontier and Cosmo Warrior Zero, but they haven't put out Super Submarine 99. Which is just crazy to me, like, if you can put out Wild 7 Another, which is cool, I'd like to see it, but if you can put that one out, and, like, Izumo, Flash of the Brave Sword, and all that sort of stuff, stuff that's never come out before, and I don't think it was ever really in the public conscience, really, on the anime conscience, really, for a lot of fans. If you put that stuff out, you can put out the two that have more pull, pulling power, at least in my opinion, they have more pulling power. So anyway, whatever, uh, Marvel 2 OVA, happy to have that one. Um, here's one, I really want to get a TV series for this, because that's also out on Blu-ray, but I picked this one out first, because it's just cheaper, and I was able to get it quicker. <laughs> so, get it into the collection, because I know I want it. Uh, I picked up uh, Baldios, the movie of Space Warrior Baldios. I don't know if that's exactly how you say that, but I'll go with it, Baldios. Uh, yeah, just another, like, uh, sci-fi giant robot series, uh, yeah, from the early 80s, once again. I think this is also 1981, actually, or 1980, I forget, but, um, does it say? 1981, I think this is a sequel, so yeah, I think the original series might be 1980, although I might be wrong about that, too, whatever. Really happy to have this on Blu-ray, again, this is crazy stuff here, this is... <laughs> Uh, this actually has a dub, I forgot about that. Yeah, this this one has been dubbed before, obviously TV series, t TV series wasn't. But yeah, I totally forgot that this has the dub, which is a different cut. Okay, so we've got, it includes the original 117 minute Japanese version in English subtitles, and the 99 minute US English dub version, remastered in high definition. 
they are both in high definition, right? They must be. Yeah, I assume they are. There's no reason why they wouldn't be. <laughs> um, yeah, well, there's a, the only one I would imagine might not have been would have been the, the uh, US English dub version because it's a different running time, but apparently it is available dubbed as well. So that's really, really cool. So, yeah, uh, don't get alternate artwork underneath on this one, unfortunately. <laughs> and they reuse the image on the front as much as they can. <laughs> Because I don't imagine they had a lot of artwork. I do love what they did with the disc, though. It's like uh, I don't. I haven't seen the series, obviously. An enemy so dirty they've condemned their entire planet. So that's that's the planet from the show. I have no idea if it's Earth or not. I suspect not, but I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, I really want to pick up the TV series for this as well. It's not very expensive, and obviously it's on Blu-ray, and it's an early. 80s giant robot series on Blu-ray as well. I actually realised recently that my classic, I, I split up digital mecha giant robot shows, like digitally painted and then cell painted classic shows, so basically everything from 2000 and upwards and everything from pre-2000. I split those up in my collection into two, two different genres and I actually have way more classic stuff than I do modern stuff, which is kind of crazy. Although obviously a lot of the the craze of mecha and giant robots and the amount of stuff that was made in that genre was obviously in the classic era more than the modern era, but still, I'm surprised to have so much more of it. <laughs> um, anyway, whatever. Uh, next up we have one that I've been wanting to get for ages, um, but I haven't necessarily been wanting to get this edition. I kind of wanted to get the Japanese version because it had this really cool alternate cover, which I just thought looked yeah, really cool. Uh, just a bit different because the image that's on the discotheque release is just kind of generic. But at the same time, like the I don't know, the Japanese release that I want is long out of print, so I decided to just pick up the discotheque release and just stop worrying about it. <laughs> and uh, if I ever find a Japanese version for cheap, then I'll pick it up. But if not, at least I have it. Because this is actually the first time I've ever bought this and um, got it in the collection. I've seen it before, but I've never had it in the collection. So uh, I've got Jimro. The Wolf Brigade, so this is a, oh, is this a Mamoru film, right? Yeah, created and written by, but not directed. Uh, it doesn't say who directed it, so maybe it is created by Mamoru Yeah, okay, no, it just says scripted, directed by, oh, wait, yeah, directed by uh, Akura. who also worked on Ghost in the Shell. Anyway, yeah, this is like a really weird version of, um, Red Riding Hood, in a way. That's kind of like what the basis for the story is. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. I haven't seen it for a million years at this point. <laughs> a million! <laughs> so, um, um, I would uh, really like to rewatch this soon, especially in high definition. I didn't watch it in high def the first time, so I imagine it looks really pretty. So, yeah. Jinro, the Wolf Brigade. Picked this up on like um, Anime Forum on the cheap. Just wanted to get it in the collection. This is currently really hard to find, I believe. <laughs> the discotheque release, so I was able to pick it up nice and cheap, obviously. Which is nice. Um, and the next one is one I never imagined myself getting, but again, I got this from the anime forum uh, that I frequent, and it was really cheap. So it was only £9, which, yeah, great deal for on Blu ray. It's like half the price it would have cost brand new, probably. So, um, yeah, I picked up. Little Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. Uh, originally, I wasn't that keen on ever buying this because I just kind of saw it as like, well, it's technically anime because it was animated in Japan, but for the most part, it's basically an American thing, kind of like um, Transformers in a way, <laughs> like the original Transformers. I mean, the, the, well, that's probably not the best comparison, but in some ways, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, can't think of a better comparison right now, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so originally I just wasn't into it, although honestly I've been kind of wanting to get and have been buying a lot of classic animated films, like ones that aren't anime, like from the 80s and 90s, just really like to see that stuff. I hate how pretty much every film nowadays, animated film from Hollywood is CG. <laughs> right? I really, really hate it. <laughs> um, I really miss the days of beautiful... 2D animation. You have to go to the indies to get that nowadays, so yeah, it's kind of a shame. But anyway, 
whatever, Little Adventure, Little Nemo, Adventures in Slumberland. So yeah, this actually does have a Japanese dub as well, so yeah, and it's on like my anime list and stuff, it's basically a, a Japanese film. I don't know the full history of it, but yeah, just decided to pick it up on the cheap, add it to the collection, don't have to worry about it anymore, I've got it, and yeah, I will definitely eventually watch that, so and I hope to like it, I don't know if I really will, but I hope to. At the very least, even if I don't necessarily like the film, the animation on the back looks really, really nice. Little tiny screenshots there, it looks really good. Um, and it comes with like pilot films, a making of, behind the scenes, all sorts of stuff, so yeah. And last, and hmm, I, won't, I won't say but least in this case, I definitely will say not, certainly not least because this one will probably be least. <laughs> Followed by Horus in a little way. Um, but anyway, yeah, this one I'm really happy to actually get in the collection. Um, this is one, there's some titles that I've been putting off buying from Discotech because I'm kind of hopeful they're going to get Blu ray releases because they have Blu ray releases in Japan. Um, stuff like Mazinga Z, the original series, and like uh, Super Dimension Century August, and stuff like that. Um, uh, Dan Cougar as well. Uh, I'm kind of waiting on the upcoming, in a couple of weeks, Otacon panel where Discotech always have their massive blowout of like, here's our bigger titles and our more, you know, fan requested titles and stuff that we're announcing and like, if I don't hear a blur release for any of that stuff then I'll go and get the DVDs because I, I at the very least want to own them. Um, I don't want to, you know, don't want to gamble waiting for a blur release that never comes. Um, but in the case of this one, even though it does have a Blu-ray release in Japan, I just didn't ever, I can't imagine Discotech ever doing a Blu-ray release of it. I'd be happy to be wrong, but I just don't see it happening, so I decided to go and get the DVD release, because this has been out for a long time. This is before they even did slipcovers, <coughs> or at the very least, they didn't even bother to put a slipcover on this one. Uh, it was subtitled by Ho on, on Hulu by TMS Entertainment. It's a 1973 uh, anime series. 47 episodes, Karate Master. <laughs> so yeah, I just I just generally do not see Discotech ever um, re-releasing this one on Blu-ray. <laughs> so, as much as I would love to have seen it on Blu-ray in beautiful high, high def, um, I believe this is mastered from maybe not the same prints, but I, it probably looks just fine on DVD. Um, yeah, so I'm just happy to own it at this point. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do, so I'm happy to have picked it up. It's just really cool, right? It's, um, you know, karate series. Um, but yeah, based, <laughs> not based, uh, it's a full 47 episode series from the 1970s. Like, I just wanted to get this one just in case this, this is one I could definitely see going out of print in the relatively near future. Potentially, I don't know how long the licenses are or anything like that, but this is a title I see that Discotech wouldn't be desperate to re-license or anything like that, extend. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I got it before it disappeared forever. So yeah, Karate Master, because it's definitely one that's got such, such, a, such a million, <laughs> such a niche appeal. Um, so yeah, that's a Karate Master, my brain is a bit fried, I haven't done these for ages, so video running time is probably catastrophically long, I uh, apologise for that. Um, hope to do more videos soon, but no promises, um, happy to have all this discotech stuff, we'll certainly be picking up some more, I have a ton of Funimation stuff to share, like probably almost as much, if not a little bit more at this point, just because by virtue of some stuff coming out I got on pre-order. Um, which kind of hampered my discotheque hauling, but still. <laughs> just a couple of titles that I have to buy from Funimation that are some of my favourites. But uh, yeah, I also really want to continue doing the bloody collection videos. I'm probably going to take the year off. And, you know, I put, last year I put anime collection video shelf by shelf things or whatever, but they were like 2018, and then the, now I put 2018 slash 2019. I'm just going to take the years off because I don't think I'm ever going to finish it by the end of this year. It's just going to be a long, long, ongoing project that I just put those videos out when I feel like it and my cat's coming in. You want to come and say hello at the very last minute? No? You want to go and eat some food? Right, I'll see you next time. <laughs>